Gillian, thank you. Now it's time for our weekly look at the big stories and the big issues in crime this week. And as always, guiding us through it, Jackie Holmes, who served with the Metropolitan Police for 30 years. You just have to keep saying it. You have to it, keep Jackie. saying it, Jackie. You don't look a day over about 35, <laughs> so you must have started very young. Now, last week we saw the, the first half of your interview with Bernard Hogan Ham, obviously the most senior police officer in the country. Fantastic that you got to talk to him. Going to see the second part of that this week. What were you talking to him about in this second part? Well, firstly, we talked about some of the, the things that are actually going to fundamentally change the way we approach crime in this country. And the big issue, obviously, in that is cybercrime. And that was the first thing I asked him about, how that's changing policing. I don't think we really understand how much of it there is. We in the Met have just created uh, a new unit called Falcon. We've had to put 500 people into that unit. We've already said we've got less money, so we've had to find 500 people from different parts of the organisation because, frankly, we're providing a poor service. People were complaining, weren't getting a good service, but we shouldn't be terrified by the scale of the task. We've got to get stuck into it, learn new skills. We're now going to have teams that are going to go after these cyber criminals and make them pay. These crimes don't have borders, really, do they, on the internet? You get someone being persecuted from anywhere, couldn't yeah. they? How do you tackle that? Well, as usual with police work, you start where you can make a difference. <laughs> I've always thought, even if the task is immense and it looks as though it's unachievable, you start and you bite the elephant in chunks. The cyber thing that frightens us is not only the fact it crosses borders, it's also the fact it's immense. So one attacker, one million emails. It's not really a case for the average police officer. It's expertise direct from universities, from other walks of life, almost outsourced to people who have that expertise. With 50,000 people in the Met, we've got some incredible people. So we've already got people who, even at the age of 40-odd, 50-odd, are actually very good computer people. They've got an intuitive grasp of it. They've got the detective skills as well. And of course it's true we'll have to get some new younger better, perhaps educated in new uh, network systems. I understand that. But I think the fusion of the two, some new people with new skills and some more experienced people with old skills. The old skills never fail you. You've got to gather evidence. We're going to have to get on with this. Uh, I think we've made a slow start as a police service. But of course this, the, the, the task has come on us quite quickly and in a massive amount. The police service has already endured 20% cuts, another 5% coming. How is this going to affect the service that you offer to the public? We've cut in the back office, so the support areas. So generally not the people they've met. In some areas we knew we'd need to make efficiencies. We were spending too much money in some areas. Um, we've run for the first two years going down to 30,000 officers, so we had 2,000 short. So it was a slight... 6%, a slight running light in the number of officers, and that, that's back up to where we, we need to be. So I hope on the whole that people will not have noticed too much. I mean, during that time, crime's come down. We've dealt with the Olympics. We've, uh, we saw last year that uh, murders were down at their lowest level for 30 years, and we're detecting 95% of them. We're seeing less antisocial behaviour. We're seeing generally less crime. So I hope that people will see that the police are doing a good job with less money, and they shouldn't be noticing a huge difference. If these cuts continue and there's an election and there's no change in, in that policy, where is policing going to be in a year's time? There's no doubt that in a recession, we're still in it, there will be less money spent on police. The only debate is how much less. So we're going to look, we have to look forward to less money. So we're going to have to be more efficient. But I think we're going to have to expect, accept a world in which eventually there will be less police officers. And then we have to deal with the consequences of that. Um, there's certainly going to be continuing pressures around terrorism. You know, that hasn't gone away. Syria and Iraq hasn't suddenly resolved itself, and nor will it for a few years now. So the impact at home of events abroad are going to be something we're going to have to cope with. There's no doubt with an election coming up, then there'll no doubt be lots of public debate, there'll be lots of angst. And there's always a danger that the police get trapped in the middle of that, that we become a subject in a political football. I hope that doesn't happen, but we have to anticipate it. And of course, what we've got to do is continue to do our job. So are we still going to see a Bobby on the beat? Yes, definitely. The, uh, when I arrived in the Met back in 2001, I think we had 26,000 cops. Today we have 32,000. Well, we managed with 26,000. We'll manage again with whatever we have in the future. I don't know what it will be with 32, 31, who knows? We'll have to wait and see. So we can manage with less. But if you ask me, I'd love to have double. I'd love to have you know, 64,000. That'd be great, wouldn't it? 
but I don't think that's going to happen. How is diversity now within the Met? Uh, we're improving, but, but not there yet. So at the moment, we're in about just over 11% of our police officers are from minorities. Far more than many other organisations, but not good enough in London. We're about one in three of the population are from minorities. But it is quite a radical thing we need to do to improve the representation, not because somebody's from a minority group or they make them a better police officer, but I think people need to look at the Met and feel as though they not only look but understand some of the cultural issues that happen in the city, which are different to many other cities, over one million Muslims in, in London, uh, a quarter of a million Greek Cypriots, I think 300,000 French people. This is a fantastic world city and our police force needs to represent them and police them in a way that they will find that they've got confidence. He's got an awful lot on his plate, Sir Burton, hasn't he? There's <laughs> no, no two ways about it. But let's um, talk cybercrime. I mean, what did you, you make, Jackie, of what he had to say on that? Because, I mean, as you put to him, this is a, an evolving crime without borders. Mm. And it's incredibly difficult to quantify. Um, he said you can only do what you can do and you can start with what's happening on your patch and try and deal with that. But the, but the worrying thing is that it's... it's sort of taking over from the, the traditional crimes. You know, we don't see robbers on the street anymore robbing banks. We see um, geeks in a room, in a back room somewhere, robbing our bank accounts that way. And that's incredibly difficult to deal with. The police service, as he said, is catching up on that. And that's always a worry. They need resources. They need bodies in, the, in a room tackling that sort of crime. He's got this new unit, 500 cops. That's just London. It needs to be a countrywide strategy to, do, to deal with cybercrime, and we will always be catch up until they get a big investment of money and resources into it. But in terms of resources, I mean, and, and as you were chatting to him about, it's you know we we still have this thing about Bobby's on the beat, and there there is it is still very important. It's an excellent deterrent as much as as anything else. He seemed convinced that at some point those figures are going to go down. Mm. Yeah, and there's no doubt about it. I mean, we're talking about what's happening now. There's another 5% cuts coming, and who knows what beyond that. The Met are very lucky because they, uh, they're they quite, uh, sm you know, in the areas are quite small to cover. If you go somewhere like Thames Valley or in Manchester, they've got big, wide open areas. It's very difficult to have police officers patrolling those large areas, even now, let alone when there's another 5% cuts. I think it's some of the smaller forces will start to suffer, and that's where the public will see a lack of that uniform presence on the street, which is so reassuring to most of us, and mm. that's why the public need to be involved in this debate. And I guess it's a fair point to say that it, you know, it, it is more reassuring if you are seeing people in the force who reflect your own, your own cultural background. 11% mm. um, uh, of, of you know, ethnic minorities. I don't know if that was just in the Met. Yes, was it? it is. But, I mean, yeah. that, as he said, is not a bad figure as far as things go, but clearly room to be, to be improved on, mm. on that. I would imagine it's not as easy as people may think to get that recruitment focused in that way. Mm. It is very difficult, and it's about those... Bobby's on the beat, building trust with that community to show them actually that this job is accessible and that they can join and make a difference in their communities and they will uh, join a police force which allows that community to respect them and particularly as we're looking at uh, Muslims and that sort of thing, they need to see their own people from their own background being police officers in order to build that trust. Pleased to say, Jackie, someone's just put 50p in the meter, oh, so the, really? the lights Glad came back that. on, that's good. <laughs> um, final thought, how important is it that, that you got this interview with Sir Bernard? Because, obviously, you know, head of the Met and it, it, the most you know, senior uh, policeman in the country, how important is it that we actually get to see him? It's the first time I've he heard him speak, actually, and to get those views so straight from the horse's mouth, that sort of reality check as to what is going on with our police force. Absolutely. I think it's, there's very little representation of, from police officers themselves. We hear politicians, we hear federation representatives, um, you know, and we perhaps hear from the PCCs more than we do the senior police officers who day in, day out have to deal with those new challenges.
changes, reorganise the strategy of their forces and directly affect the policing service that you're getting on your streets. So I think it's incredibly important that they're more open and transparent in their dealings with the police and actually talk to the public. And I think a lot of people will be surprised at how relaxed and open and transparent Sir Bernard Hogan Howe was. Yeah, absolutely. Jackie, thank you. More coming up.